hurt that you're going through Deep inside your heart Just know one thing You're not alone A free and just society should look very similar to a festival tent where protection is there if needed but it's wide open for ease and convenience and nobody is forced to attend and they can leave whenever they want. It should not look like this from the outside and this from the inside where everyone is confined to their individual cells and all are monitored by a central monitoring empowered agency with them alone having the firearms. You're not alone This lesson is likely going to completely shift your paradigms. Hello and welcome to lesson four of Fundamentals of Freedom. Today we're going to have a little chat about society and statutes. Now, uh, uh, where to start really? A society, as you uh, saw earlier in the definitions, is defined as a number of people joined by mutual consent to deliberate, determine, and act for a common goal. Uh, you can find definitions very similar to that in just about any any of the law dictionaries, uh, any old English dictionary. What you will see is that consent is very necessary for that. And within it, uh, if you factor in the definition also of a statute, you start to see that a statute is not law. It's merely the rule of a society which has been given the force of law within that society. Now, in order to explain this a little bit better, I want to use one of my famous analogies. Now imagine you have an island. And that island is surrounded by water. And in that water, there be pirates. That's a pirate ship. And there's sharks. It's a shark fin. I'm a horrible drawer. Now, this island represents law. And here you have the law. The water represents outlaw. Or outside of the law. <coughs> you don't want to be outside the law. There you will find sharks and there you will find pirates. And if you are operating out there, you're going to want to have your own ship. Now, the law, the island, is the law. And on this island, you can find a shack Call it a house, a house that has been built on the island of law. Now this house, when you build a house, you have to have a foundation. And that foundation has to be within the bounds of the island. And when you build your walls, they can only be within the, the boundaries of the foundation. If you try to build that house without a foundation, it fails. If you try to build that foundation outside the bounds of the law, it fails. And therefore, the house has to stay within the bounds of the law. Now this house represents, for all intents and purposes, we will call it society. And, essentially this is equity. Within this structure right here, you have a society where people have entered into it voluntarily, and they are bound by the rules of that society, of that house party. The thing is, the people who are operating this society, they cannot operate in a way that is unlawful. This is why that maxim is important. The law, upon the law, you can build your house. But upon your house, you cannot build an island. The law will give rise to a fiction such as this society, but the fiction itself cannot create rules and then call them the law. The statutes are in fact the rules that exist within this house. And all of those rules must be at all times lawful. If they're not lawful, you can disregard them. Now, 
a society on this house, you must be able to leave the house. If you can't leave the house, it's no longer a society. You must be a member through mutual consent. And if you are not a member through mutual consent, they can't take those rules of the house and apply them to you in a manner that is offensive to the law. If they do, you have a right to come down on them for it. <clears throat> one problem that a lot of people make, one, one big mistake that a lot of people make, and certainly what the people in the house want you to believe, is that their rules do in fact form the law. That's not the case. If you're in their house, their rules have the force of law. But, leaving the house doesn't mean you have abandoned law. And it doesn't mean you have abandoned the protection that the law affords everyone regardless of whether or not you're in the house or not in the house. Now, what we're facing is that this society that we have, and the World Free Man Society's perspective on it, is that within this house, you will have the parent figures, and then you have the children, the little babies, now, are you a parent figure or are you a little baby? Are you, in fact, a ward of the state? At the beginning of this lesson, you saw these maxims. If you know not the name of a thing, all knowledge of that thing must perish. And here's a challenge to you. Name your society. In order for it to exist legally as an actual structure in the land of law, you have to have a name. If you do not know the name of your society, you cannot claim that it exists. Now, the structure that I see, the way it's unfolded, there is a society. And that society is the law society. And this law society has generated a series of rules for their own house. And because you have come to them much like a child, begging them through application, submission, and registration. They have taken you, they have taken you in, lawfully, into their, their society, and now they, they claim that you are subject to their rules. And that is all within the bounds of the law. It's all entirely lawful. So here you are, you're not really a member of the society, but you're bound by the rules, and they get to claim that these rules, you can't understand them, but they can. And therefore, they end up being, for all intents and purposes, your nanny. There's nothing, however, stopping you from exiting their structure and existing within the bounds of the law, but not within the bounds of their house. And that doesn't mean that because you reject their statutes, you reject the law, and you now exist here in outlaw land or on the high seas, where you can be eaten by sharks and attacked by the pirates. You can, in fact, exist within the law and not exist within their structure. The big problem that I see is I, I like the concept of societies. I've got no problem with them. But what I don't like is a society that claims that we are all bound by their rules, but we can't understand those rules, and only they can. That's not lawful to me. Now, if, however, you try to leave, and you try to act, do so in a childish manner, they get to claim that you are a child still, and they can and do stop you from leaving. But if you do it in a, in a manner, in a fashion, which claims the moral high ground, and doesn't harm, damage, or use fraud in your contracts, there is nothing that this other person can do to stop you from uh, growing up and leaving their structure and saying, I'm no longer your child, I'm an adult like you are, we both exist in the land of law, and I'm not consenting to you being my nanny. The big problem is you try to claim that you are a member of a society, but you can't name it. And unless and until you can name your society, you simply can't claim to be a member of one. It's absolutely ludicrous to attempt to do so. And look at some uh, Supreme Court rulings. Read some of them up. They will always make reference to 
in a free and just society, but they never ever claim that you are actually a member of one or that the claim plaintiff is a member of one. They always skirt right around that. They never say in this free and just society. And if you, if there was one in existence, we'd, uh, they would mention it, but they don't mention it because it doesn't exist. If you were a member of a society, one of the standard things, well, this is how you define all members of a, one singular society. It's the name. They can all exactly name their own society. Whether you're in the Notary Public Society of British Columbia, the Law Society of British Columbia, the Association of Professional Engineers. All of these people are members of a specific society. And because we haven't made our own, the Law Society gets to take care of us like we're a bunch of kids. The problem with that is when large corporations are in charge, warfare becomes profitable and manufactured need becomes merely an acceptable business practice and men of violence and anger will be employed by men of greed and power with the ultimate end result being an absurd level of control rejection of which will prove to be terminal so here we are now what I'd like you to do is learn to distinguish between the law and the statutes and although they are similar and certainly related and the statutes are limited by the law there's really only three ways to break the law and there's millions of ways to break statutes and those three ways is to harm damage or do fraud so if you live your life in such a fashion where you never do harm you never do any damage to other people's property without their consent and you never engage in fraud or mischief in your contracts then you will be keeping the law and what it boils down to is love because love is the law and if you simply live your life with love you will find that you will go through it without doing any of these things quite naturally now if we accept that love is the law and the statutes are bound by the law yet here's something very funny what these people do in here, they want you in their, their society or under their society's control. They will codify the law and they create a body of statutes. Now some of it, they're just making up and they decide for themselves and they pull it essentially out of their hat. However, some of it is in fact merely them codifying what already exists as the law. Now, suppose for a moment, I write a book on the rules of hockey. Now, people have been playing hockey for hundreds of years, but I come along and I write a book, Rob's Rules of Hockey, and I see people playing hockey. Can I then claim, hey, you're playing my game because you're following my rules when all I did was codify previously existing rules? No. So what they've done is their body of statutes that they've created, some of it is drawn from the law, and some of it are merely statutes that are applicable within this body, within this house. And in this house, they look at you as a child because you have engaged in actions uh, which were entirely voluntary, which identified you as an ignorant child, essentially, in the eyes of the law. One of the things you'll find, what I noticed when I was deconstructing the Acts, one of the words I did not find in any of the Acts was the word love. You don't find it in there. Love and compassion and truth were three words I looked for and couldn't find them anywhere in there. And then I realized the reason why. They want to keep you in the house because it's quite profitable to them to do so. And so they don't want to mention love compassion and truth because then that brings your mind to the love of the law and when that happens you simply have very little need for their services at that point that's why they come at you with their statutes millions and millions of words a pile of rules greater than anything that the people in soviet russia had to suffer under and apparently we're all bound by them and here's where it gets really messed up from the point of view of the law they claim that these words which govern us only they can understand it and we can't because we're children so if we want to know what any of these statutes and acts mean 
and what they say, we have to go to them and accept their interpretation. Their interpretation will always be that they are in charge of the child. Because that way, they have the right. What if that child's rich? What if they're actually heir to a fortune? And because they demonstrate that they act like a, a child, this party gets to treat them like a child and gets to administer their fortune. Do you see why they try to get you to ignore the love and ignore the law in favor of their acts and their statutes? If you do, they get to treat you like a child. All you really have to do is live your life with love and you will find that it will be very natural for you to do no harm, to do no damage, and to use no fraud or mischief in your contracts. The question then is, are you going to allow these other people who do not accept this to draw you away from the law? Now remember, the law can give rise to a fiction. The fiction cannot give rise to the law. And as a matter of fact, what these fictions seem to want to do is to draw you away from the love and from the law. What if you don't need them to interpret the law anymore? Now, in this lesson, uh, where you don't really have an assignment, we have a class project. And that project is, in fact, to serve soup simultaneously. Remember the other lesson where we spoke about human dignity? Try to tie that in. Now, it's going to require the class and those who consider themselves to be taking these lessons to consider themselves a class and to communicate, deliberate, determine, and then act for this goal. How you do it, when you do it, I don't care. Just get her done. What you're going to end up doing is, through this class project, forming a small little mini society for the sole purpose of serving some soup. That's it. What you define as simultaneously, uh, I'd be pretty flexible on that. Provided uh, you could argue, oh, that one party is digesting soup. Because it might be hard to do it simultaneously and serve soup in the morning. So yeah, I, I could uh, be very flexible on how simultaneous simultaneous actually is but it's about serving the soup. I want to see that you have demonstrated an ability to deliberate, determine, and then act for a common goal. Use whatever tools are necessary uh, that you have at your disposal to do that. You got Skype, you got YouTube, uh, you have your accounts. Use them. You might think you're just serving a little bit of soup but there's actually a reason for me to ask you to operate in this manner where people across the globe are communicating for the purpose of achieving a common goal that common goal being serving soup I actually like soup a lot I invented a new kind of soup it's brothless I call it powder Now, just because we have a class project does not mean that you do not have uh, some assignments. And as always, for my lessons, I would like you to do this for your humble teacher. Rate, share, comment, and favorite. It helps me in order to uh, get the videos out there. I'm looking very weird to my neighbor's friends who are coming in right now. All they see is me sitting and talking to my camera all by myself. What I should do is use a hidden camera so they wouldn't even see the camera. Oh, that could be fun. Now, you might think that the Serve Soup Simultaneously project is a little bit weird, and uh, maybe it is. But the way I look at it, if you can hook up with two other people across the globe, and then using the tools of discussion and deliberation, Determine what your course of action is. Engage in that course of action. And do something as simple and humbling as serving soup to those who are in need. Then the question that must open up to you will be that. And there's, I see no answer for it. 
you will get to the point where you realize there's very little limit to what you can do. If you can do that, if you can serve soup, there's hope for you against the world, New World Order because you'll demonstrate an ability to work together simultaneously to deliberate, determine, and act for a common goal. If you can't even do that, you're in a bit of trouble. Now you have the tools available to you via YouTube. You've got accounts. You can post a comment here. I shouldn't have to do anything. It's your project. You do it. Maybe I would suggest maybe setting something up so it's uh, a weekly thing so anyone who wants to do it can do it. Or just do it once. But prove to me that you have established that you have served soup simultaneously. And provided it's still in their digestive tract, I'd accept that it was served simultaneously because you can't serve soup anymore. Well, who, who cares? Serve soup simultaneously. And don't tell me you can't do it. Soup is cheap, it's easy to make. Everyone loves soup. It crosses all cultural boundaries. And, uh, yeah, get creative, have fun, make a little video out of it.